while you're there in Boston, you play alongside the bird, uh, Larry. What was most memorable stories with Larry that you can tell us about? Because we all know how notorious of a shit talker he was. Yeah, that was that was it. I mean, how much shit he talked, right? Because I thought when I first got there and having grown up on the West Coast and always pulled against the Lake, uh, the Celtics when they were playing against the Lakers, you know, during the Showtime days, um, I was like, man, they letting this white boy who, who can't jump, who's not athletic, kill them like that. He ain't that damn good yeah. until I got there. Yeah. And I remember one of the first practices um, he told me and Reggie Lewis, he said, I want to play you guys one on two. <laughs> up to up to seven, right? Yeah. And so, like, like come on, man. He was like, the only catch is I get the ball first. So, me and Reggie look at each other. We like, yeah, all right, man, whatever. So, the next thing you know, it's six nothing. Yeah, <laughs> right. We ain't even touched the ball yet. He hits his first six shots. Yeah. So when it got to be six nothing, we go into seven. We like because it would be like one of us would guard him, and another one would be ready to try to get the rebound. So we was like, fuck that. We double teamed him. <laughs> he finally missed. We got the ball. And then we just kind of played keep away from him. We ended up coming back and winning seven to six. So yeah. then I was like, and that was one of my early experiences with him. I was like, okay, all right. He he got a little bit more than what I what I thought he had. Then when we started playing, he was cooking everybody, but talking shit and telling them about it. And Kevin McHale was a bad motherfucker too. And yeah. he used to talk a lot of shit. So they would. And, and, and I'll share this quick story. We were playing Utah, and back then, you score on a play, you just keep running it again again until, until they stop it. So I would, I would have to hit Reggie, go through, set a cross screen for Larry, and Carl Malone was guarding Larry. Larry was killing him. Kevin McHale was locking Carl Malone up on the other end, uh -huh. and Larry was talking about, yeah, we too bad white boys, ain't we? <laughs> so I remember going across – setting the screen on Carl the first time, Larry came off, caught it, scored. As we were running back down the court, Carl Malone said, young fella, you set a screen on me again like that, I'm gonna knock your head off your shoulders. The whole time I'm running down court, I'm like, damn, is, is he really gonna do this shit? And I know we're about to run the play again, right? Cause we just scored on him. So I hit Reggie again, I go across to set the pick, and I'm standing in the middle of the lane, Larry cuts off, and I see Carl, rear his uh, forearm <laughs> back like this. And and I, so I'm standing in, standing in. I'm like, is this one really gonna try to do it? And then he came through and at the last second I jumped out the way and I was like, damn, he really, yeah. and he was gonna uh, take it out on me because yeah. Larry Cause was busting, busting his, his ass, ass. <laughs> you know, busting his ass and talking shit. But uh, you know, that that story and the, and, and the last one that stuck out with me as a rookie, we were staying at the Howard Johnson's motel by Fenway Park. And Larry came and brought, got all the rookies that were trying out for the team and took us to dinner. And so we're sitting at dinner, we can't, admit, we can't believe, like Larry Bird is actually taking us out. And, and we said, hey, you know, where, where is it that we can go out down here in Boston tonight? He said, go to the Ramrod. It's a club right across the street from the, um, from the motel. Ramrod. Yeah. So the name right there, right, the Ramrod, I'm like, that don't sound right, yeah, right? Sound, sound, <laughs> sound a little fishy. <laughs> so we get back, you know, we wait until it gets a little bit later and shit, come out the motel, and across the street is the club, the Ramrod. So we come out and look, and it's a long ass line waiting to get in. Get, get in. So we walk across the street, it's dark out, it's all dudes <laughs> in black leather, <laughs> and motorcycles and shit, but all, all not a, a one single woman. Yeah. So we like, and the club is called the Ramrod. <laughs> so, Hilarious. So we was like, oh, okay. <laughs> he was trying to do us dirty. <laughs> so we get when we got to practice the next day to in training camp, he just he was cracking up, yeah. you know. About, but that's but that's where he sent it. So he had a, he had a great sense of humor. He talked a lot of shit, um, but a great teammate to as a young player to come up and, you know, learn under and teach you the right way to do things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you know, cause you, you played, you, you played in Indiana when he was a the president there, mm -hmm. you know, what kind of dude he was. Yeah. Yeah. No, nah, he was definitely a prankster. He was, uh, you know, I had stories with him where, you know, I had some, some stuff that went on in, <laughs> in, in my early career with, you know, I had this catfish situation and, uh, he texted me the picture that got leaked, uh, <laughs> And 
and it it was just funny him being you know the president and the relationship that we had. Uh, but that was him, man. He was just a prankster, and and you know he would have his days. I will say that some days you know not to fuck with Larry. Uh, but then you know for the most part he was you know he he was pretty cool and chill. We've heard the rumors that Larry would actually be offended if another white guy would would be guarding him. Was that true? And do you have any stories of of him kind of <laughs> complaining about that? That's yeah, funny. that's definitely true. Um, he definitely took it as an insult if you put a white dude on him. And one example that I can remember, we were playing Phoenix Suns. I think Cotton Fitzsimmons was their head coach. And they had a pretty good player, white dude named Tom Chambers. That could, I don't know if you guys remember him oh, yeah, jumping Tom. over mm-hmm. Mark mm-hmm. Jackson mm-hmm. when he when he dunked the ball. And Tom Chambers was, was gardening. And Larry caught the ball in front of they in front of their bench and like just turned around and just had a full on conversation with Cotton Fitzsimmons and the and they coaching staff. <laughs> Y'all really gonna try to disrespect <laughs> me like this? Y'all gonna put this white dude on me and think that he could guard me? And then just turn around and just shot a jumper in his face and just went down court, you know, shaking yeah. his head. But like stuff like that was just, it was just commonplace, you know, but he definitely, definitely felt insulted um, <laughs> if you tried to put a white dude on. That's funny. We wanted to take a brief break from the episode to let you know that Prize Picks has got you guys covered when it comes to helping you make some money during the NBA season. That's right, baby. Prize Picks is helping me cash in. Prize Picks is a daily fantasy app, and with the NBA season in full swing, you can select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and turn $25 into $250. Prize Picks is really easy, simple to play. I can make my picks and submit my entry in less than 60 seconds, y'all. It's also that time of the year where many sports are happening at the same time time and of course price picks allows you to pick combo projections across all different sports like basketball you can even do esports like league of legends and cs2 go so you can support all your favorite teams while still cashing in. Well, I know for me, I've been cashing in. I don't know about that. I'm talking about Legion of Dooms and all that stuff. <laughs> but uh, that's a story for another day. Be sure to visit prizepicks.com slash podcastp and use code podcastp for a first deposit match up to $100. And y'all already know what time it is. Cha-ching! Cha-ching! 